Hi everybody, this is Flash001 USA. It is February 19th, 2013. I've had a lot of people asking me how the new gasifier project was coming out, so I figured the best way to answer that question was just to break out the camera and let you get a peek for yourself. So with that said, right now I've got the lid on this thing upside down, so I'm exposing the inside so you can see this thing. And keep in mind it is still under construction. With that said, I'm going to give you the nickel tour here, okay? We'll walk around this thing one time, and then I'm going to give you a breakdown of everything that you're looking at. All right, since I'm on the back of this thing, I'm going to start here. This is my ignition port, and this will have a piece of uh, steel pipe that comes out and protrudes from the back of the barrel, and this will be where I light it up at. Okay, and um, this is an invert system, so unlike the FEMA or the downdraft, the wood hopper, once it's loaded up, has an airtight lid that goes on it, so the only oxygen that can enter this system is through air nozzles. And for mine, I've got a total of five of them on here. Now, I'm not looking to run an automobile with this or run a car or something with it. What I am looking to do is generate electricity with it. So this thing is actually going to be geared up between 3.5 to 12.5 horsepowers. That's what it's going to handle with its sweet spot. Uh, that's meaning the, the tuned spot for these nozzles, the best place where they'll work at, the optimum temperatures, if everything goes to plan with it, will fall between really between 6.5 to 7.5 horsepower, somewhere in that neck of the woods. And... Um, with that said, I'm going to tell you what I got here. This was an old oxygen tank. I got this thing for like $10 from the junkyard. Wound up cutting it down. I paid 15 bucks for this brand new. This is a, a trailer rim. I got it from Harbor Freight. Had to get it because I seen it and realized it was absolutely perfect for what I was wanting to do with it. Now, you notice that it's like this and it dips in and it goes down. Well, what I did on the inside of this thing was I cut a steel cone out that goes inside this thing to give it the natural cone shape but I took it a step further than that. I loaded this thing down completely with high temperature concrete and set that cone in it. So in other words, when archeologists dig up the world here in the next couple of centuries, they'll find this thing, it'll still be around. And um, I built it bulletproof basically. Now being an invert system, you know, they say that you gotta have an X amount of distance from your nozzles to your restriction zone on this thing. So I had to extend this a little bit out. So I made another concrete ring here to allow me to bring this thing up to the proper height. So I had the proper distance from here to the reduction zone on this thing here, the smallest opening of it. And um, I got a steel band around that. I, like I said, I wasn't fooling around when I built this thing. And on top of it is my inverted bell. And I took advantage of the, the setup on this guy here as far as the where the lugs went on it. This is how I put the bell on here, and that's how I put the concrete ring on here. Plus, this allows me, if I need to make any changes or any repairs or anything to this, I can take these guys off. If I want to change this guy out, if I want to extend this burn zone, I can do anything from this point right here. So I was thinking when I was putting this thing together as if it was some sort of Rolls-Royce engine. I wanted it to be serviceable. Now, something I want you to notice, red 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 okay for most of you guys you'd already know what that is i've said this in past videos and they'll tell you if you look on any website where people build these things you got to make sure it is absolute i can't say this enough they got to be airtight you don't want any oxygen entering this system whatsoever where it's not supposed to it could be uh cause a dangerous flashback the food factor a lot of things can happen and go wrong and it still can, even when you build something up like this, you can see these things backfire. I've seen mine backfire and it scared the crap out of me. And um, so you want to limit it or just get it to down to a minimum of anything that can go wrong factors, you want to get them down to the minimum, okay? So everything on my setup is absolutely sealed, is airtight. This could be a submarine. Um, I used half inch copper pipe on mine. And basically what I've got right here, Try not to laugh at this. I went and bought me some fence post. I think it's a two and a half inch fence post and I got me a, a top to go on it. And you can see what I did right here. 
I basically tapped, since I got five nozzles, I tapped five holes on this thing. And then I got uh, the couplers that went in here, okay, screwed those in there. I actually took the time to thread them in the whole nine yards. So even in this lid right here around there, there is RTV cement. This thing is airtight. I took this guy here, and I went to the bottom of them, and I put a bunch of little slices all the way around it, and I bent it in like this. And then I took a one and a quarter inch iron coupler, and let those claws grab it, and I welded it in there. I had to tack weld it 5,000 times because I realized really quick that when you start welding on something real thin, it's so easy to burn through it. And trust me, I'm no more experienced at welding than the man on the moon is. As a matter of fact, I never owned a welder until I started building these things here. I can solder all day long, but this metal urgency or metal work is definitely not my cup of coffee. So basically what I wound up having to do was, I, first I was going to try to run a low current setting and I realized I wasn't getting a penetration on him because guess what he's right at a quarter inch thick and um, for my welder they tell you for quarter inch thick steel you got to run the high current setting well what I wound up doing though is if I try to run it low so I wouldn't burn through here um, I would get the penetration and I wound up with a crappy weld so what I did is I had to run it on high I had to sit there and run a slow wire and basically let it heat it up good and hot and build up the the steel slowly and then quickly whoosh, swing around it's so normally you'd be like this and I had to do it like this let it heat swing it up there and um, so basically more than a weld it's like tack welded 5,000 times that was the only way I was able to get it on there and then I had to go back and make sure there was no air leaks in it and I went inside of it and lined the inside of it with RTV cement just as a precaution now this guy's not coming off here he's as permanent as permanent can be and I would trust my life on this thing, okay? As far as, you know, if I had this in, uh, if this was part of my vehicle, I know this would not break off. So it was just a hard job to do, but it is done. Now, this is my air intake, and on the other side of this, I've got a valve that will open and close, so I can control the airflow going to these nozzles. I can, can um, control it by shutting it down completely to 0% to suffocate the thing out, or open it wide open to 100% as much air as this thing can physically drag through it. I'm going to take my fuel out of the top of this thing right here. So this is my output for the gas. And um, that come off sweet. Now all this stuff here is high temperature soldered in here because I know I'm not going to have temperatures that are going to exceed the solder. It's rated I think 400 degrees. And um, I already know for the build that I'm doing I'm not going to get that close to it. Reason being, I had a 30 gallon barrel for my first one and I wasn't, I wasn't even getting nowhere near close to the temperatures when I was running it. And even though the sky is bigger, I've actually got a smaller setup on this up here, so basically I'm not going to be producing any more heat. And now that I've got a 55-gallon barrel drum, it's definitely not going to have an issues with overheating. So I was able to get away with that. Same thing with these guys here. Um, all my fittings are actually high temperature soldered in here, but then again, I know I'm not going to have a problem with this because I'm going to be drawing air through it. Now these guys here, they're pressure fitted up in there. I didn't solder this naturally, it would just fall right off. Uh, I've got basically RTV cement on that that's shoved all the way up to right about to there. Okay, and I've got to go back and I've got to put a lock screw on these guys and that's my next step to do on this thing. Now I want to show you my barrel here. I'm really happy about this because I got lucky on this. I'm sure that you guys probably can go buy these things like I can. You find these hardware stores that purchase them from factories and um, they get them and you know they probably pay five bucks for them and they sell them to us for like 10 or 20 bucks. I paid $17 for this guy here and um, the good thing about it was there was never any liquid in it. As a matter of fact everything that was inside this barrel here was wrapped in bubble wrap and the whole barrel itself is lined with bubble wrap so whatever chemicals they had in it um, nothing was exposed. When I say the inside of this thing looks brand new, I mean it looks brand new. And um, so I felt like I got really lucky on that. Now I want to show you my door here, okay? I thought this come off really sweet. I got this idea when I went to vacuum my car a couple weeks ago. I was looking at the outside vacuum cleaners and how they did their doors for their, um, I guess their cleaning port on them to clean out all the stuff that gets swept up. And I thought, you know, that's really cool. I need to do the same thing with this. So what I did, I've got three latches on it. They got a nice tight fit. Let you hear it. Okay. Swings it open, got it on hinges. And um, 
I went ahead, rather than just using the barrel itself, I wanted to put a cosmetic faceplate on it because I want this thing to look good too. Uh, I want it to look cherry when I'm finished with it. I'm going to be painting this thing with a high temp paint and the whole nine yards when I'm finished with it. Like I said, I plan on having this thing around for a long time. So, with that said, I went ahead and uh, made me a face plate, plus it thickened up my steel on the front of it, and this makes sure that I get an absolute seal in this door when I go to close it. And even behind this guy here, there's RTV cement all around the side of this. It is not going to leak. I'll use me some sort of um, high temperature cloth that I'll put on here, and what I'm going to do with this, the way I'm going to get the seal on it is, I want the door when it closes to shove the cloth in a little bit so the cloth kind of bulge out, but when it matches up against here, it'll create an absolute tight seal, and I won't have to worry about any air getting in this thing, and this thing will last a long, long time. Check this out. That's the way you want those latches. Now, they're pretty tight right now. By the time I put the cloth on this thing, it's going to be a little bit tighter, and um, I couldn't be more pleased with this, okay? I've taken my time with it. I want the job to be right, and once I test it and work the bugs out of it, I plan on releasing a build or, or at least something close to a build. I don't know about you guys, but for me, if I see how, how something's put together, I can actually go back, and I may have to do my own rendition of it, but um, I can always come up with something that's comparable. So what I'm thinking about doing is just kind of giving you guys the once over. I've already got a bunch of photos of everything of this as, as I was building each part. And once I get the final release on this thing, once I know that I'm producing clean gas and the whole nine yards, I will cut the build loose on this. And if nothing else, it'll at least put you in the right direction. And I did this with a bare minimum of tools, okay? I did this with a drill, with a jigsaw, um, an angle grinder, angle cutter. I did it with a small welder, which I mean, uh, one of those cheap small welders right here. One of those uh, $89 jobs that you get from um, Harbor Freight. So there you're looking at it. And you can do this with a bare minimum of tools. So the good thing is, you know, you can do this by yourself. And for those of you out there that own a machine shop or have access to it, more power to you. Um, I didn't, and nor did I want to turn back around and pay somebody my firstborn to do some of this work for me and plus it was fun doing it okay so there you go everybody this is what I got going on right now um, this is a, the first part of this guy right here that I'm finishing up I still got to turn back around and add my ash grate on the bottom of this thing and of course um, do a little bit more work on the barrel not much but the hard part of it's out of the way but then again like I said this has been a job for me the hardest part has been it's not been the welding or the cutting it's been that I have to sit down and think about it, okay, how am I going to make this part? How am I going to fabricate this part to do this, that, and the other? And um, the next video, I'll be showing you my air nozzles. Like I said, for my build, my build required that I had five nozzles with three-eighths inch openings on them, okay, for the sizes that I'm engine that I'm going to be running off of it. And um, I found three-eighths inch pipe couplers, but guess what? Their openings were half an inch half inch opening on so what I did was I found some steel some steel welding tube this stuff right here I cut a piece down right here so you guys can see it just happened to be a half inch on the outer diameter and a three-eighths inch opening I mean it was cherry man I couldn't believe it and so basically what I did was I took a drill half inch bit and just went inside this guy and dressed him to knock off any um, imperfections in it and I cut these pieces here three quarters of an inch and then I shoved them, I pressure pushed them up in there, and uh, they're, so they're press fitted in there. Half an inch of it's, it protruded inside. That's right here, that is not here. I'm just showing you on the fitting. And I've got a quarter inch sticking out of the nozzle, and then of course that whole piece goes in there. So, like I said, that made it where I kept exactly to the specs of the invert designs. And um, there you go. I hope you guys get a kick out of this, and um, I'll be glad to answer any questions. So this is Flash 001USA, and I'm fixing to turn this camera off and walk upstairs. Good night, everybody.